Hey guys, it's Carl, and the MacBook Pros, more specifically the 16 inch and 14 inch with the M1 Max and M1 Pro respectively, laptops have been out now for six months. They're already half a year old. And one of the biggest questions I get, is it worth still grabbing these now? Should you wait for the next gen MacBooks, whether that's the new MacBook Pros or even the rumored MacBook Airs with the new M2 chip, which is the most important thing. So first off, I'll give my quick little recap of these using them for the past six months. We've We've got both the 16 inch, 14 inch model. I do rock the 16 as my daily. And the main reason for that is I prefer the larger screen. I prefer the extra battery. That's what I love most about this. I am crushing 10 hours of battery every single day before I have to juice it up. And for me, that is the standout thing. The MacBook Pro's battery life is just leaps and bounds ahead of anything else on the market. They are industry leading. Even the new 12th gen Intel laptops that I've kind of used, they don't come anywhere close. So that's the main reason, obviously the screen size I love. When I'm traveling, I can get by with a larger device. And if I really wanted the 14 inch, which is actually what Nick is using right now as his main rig. Nick, I'm gonna put you on the hot spot in 10 words or less. Your thoughts, opinions. Best overall computer I've ever used. Best overall computer I've ever used. Six words. That's a bold statement. Honestly, I'd probably say the same thing myself and I am slightly biased because I'm in the Apple ecosystem. So I've got my MacBook Pro, I've got my iPhone sticking off to the side here. I've even got my iPads. I've got the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, which is technically better than this. In terms of performance, I haven't noticed a difference between either, mostly because my workflow, so we're running these YouTube videos, we're running the channel, we're doing all the social media stuff here. Even though we're recording in 4K on both cameras, both of these machines. So this one has the M1 Max, M1 Pro, M1 Ultra behind me. Across all three machines, they're flawless. So the timelines are absolute butter. I think neither of us can actually scratch the surface on these devices. I actually haven't even heard the fans ramp up on any of them once over the past six months. So they've been super impressive. The best laptop that I've used. Is it worth it to get one now? Honestly, with this performance, yeah, I honestly haven't seen an upgrade to the MacBook line as substantial as this one. And I've been using Macs now for what, close to 15, 16 years. The new silicon is just a game changer and that will only get better over time. So if you are in need of one, if you're coming from any Intel based MacBook or you're going into the Mac ecosystem right now. The new MacBook Pros are almost perfection, but don't get me wrong, they're not perfect. There are some things that I'm still not crazy about. So initially I love the new port selection. So obviously we've got the new MagSafe to USB and I was thrilled to see the SD card slot make a comeback, it's slightly thicker now. This is kind of a hit or miss for me sometimes. I would say maybe two out of the three times it works. For whatever reason, my SD cards just don't read and I have to use a dongle again. Not the end of the world. The display, near perfection, once again, industry leading. It's 1600 nits, it's super bright. 120 hertz refresh rate with ProMotion. The notch, haven't really noticed it too much. The keyboard, I maybe will go against the grain and I do miss the touch bar bit. I'm fine to have the escape keys, good old touch ID, but um, sometimes since I am on social a lot, I always try to flick through emojis, trying to find the best one to reply. You don't get that with the standard keys. Once again, that is personal preference. Speakers, once again, industry leading. It's the loudest laptop, the best kind of bass. Three mic array, build quality, once again, industry leading. It's what you'd expect for a computer that ranges from $2,000 to $5,000, depending how you spec it. But for gaming, which is obviously a big thing, that's something that Max just can't do. Obviously there are games on Apple Arcade, there are ways around it, but the gaming experience on this, if you're looking to play any AAA titles for the past you know, year or so, even those 12th gen laptops that I mentioned, um, they still crush this. So, you know, rocking Halo, rocking Far Cry 6, or even a game that you can actually rock on a Mac, like StarCraft II, my favorite RTS game of all time, you still cannot play that on ultra settings, which on that 12th gen Intel laptop, it handles that like an absolute breeze. So gaming is something that still has a bit of an asterisk around it, but that's my thoughts 
on the MacBook Pros. But according to the rumor mills and timelines for the next Mac products that we're gonna get, we will not see an updated 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. So the best time to buy one is still now, even though six months has gone by, but there will be a new M2 MacBook Air coming out this year in 2022. It'll be built with mini LED tech. It won't be as bright. I'm guessing around a thousand nits. It won't have ProMotion. And the thing that probably bothers me the most about these rumors slash what we're seeing, it will have white bezels. So very similar to the current iMac line that we see. And I think Apple's marketing scheme or thought process behind that is the white bezels will be the entry level devices, whereas the nice sleek black bezels will be reserved for the pro models. Same to the iMac line. So I've got the good old iMac keyboard here. The MacBook Air's keyboard will mimic and have the exact same white chiclet style keyboard. So if we actually place this here, you can actually get a very good sense of what that might look like. If we can do some imagining here with the white bezels, that's what's shaping up to be the design of the MacBook Airs. And the last thing, and maybe the most interesting thing for the design options are you can now grab the MacBook Airs in a bunch of new colorways, just like the iMac line, just like the iPad Air line. And maybe my only request from Apple, which was kind of my pet peeve when the new iMacs came out. So the back of the M1 iMac has a really dope orange colorway it's deeper it's more saturated but the accessories of the aluminum were in this unfortunate pastel i'm gonna say that's salmon like color it is leaning towards this colorway for the macbook airs but i can only wish they choose the deeper orange color so it's gonna be kind of cool for the first time we will see a bunch of new colorway options for a macbook lineup i am coming from a time when we had the og white and black MacBooks. So when I actually went to school and university, those were the biggest rage. And then they just went into the standard uh, aluminum, the space gray, which got a huge run in popularity. And right now on the MacBook Pro line, these are the only two color options. And in the MacBook Air line, you've got these two plus the gold. So it'll be fun to see all the new colors. Let me know which one your favorite one was. And the last thing about the design, because it will have a similar form factor, we will just be getting the USB-C ports. We unfortunately will not be getting the extra ports like HDMI, like the SD card slot, um, and probably not even a MagSafe charger. So it'll still be based around a USB-C design, but it will have the updated square design of the MacBook Pros and no longer will have the tapered edges of the MacBook Air, the current ones. In terms of performance, it'll have the new M2 chip and we'll use Nick's Photoshop skills again to create a little graph. That will be better than the OG M1 chip, but it'll have less performance than the M1 Pro, obviously less performance than the M1 Max, and obviously less than the M1 Ultra. So it'll kind of fit right in between. If there's any indication there, I'm sure performance will be great for 95% of users that get it, especially around that $1,000 mark. So right now, MacBook Air start at $999. I am almost positive we will see a price bump to around $1,199, maybe even $1,300. I'm hoping they keep it under that $1,200 mark. Obviously inflation, obviously with the new design, Apple has to charge a bit extra money since they're moving away from an older chassis. And to finally round out the rumor mill, there's something coming that isn't really confirmed yet. Uh, this one hasn't received as much buzz, a new 13 inch potentially standard MacBook. So right now we do have the 13 inch MacBook Pros. Apple is looking to drop the Pro name and that will come with a obviously brand new redesign, similar to what we have now. So that one will have a slight redesign. It won't have any of the updated ports. You won't have a new display. It'll just have the new M2 chip. So it'll be MacBook, MacBook Air, and of course, right here on the far side, the MacBook Pro still, which will still kind of be the king of the MacBook lineup. So I'm not too sure about the OG MacBook naming. Of course, the MacBook Airs will be coming and the MacBook Pros will still be around. We won't get a refresh this year. So if you are waiting for a new device, if you want something with a bit funkier colorways, if you like the cheaper form factor, or the cheaper price point of the MacBook Airs, it might be worth waiting for. If you are someone that likes to have the SD card slot, perhaps the good old HDMI port and the extra battery life on these chunkier MacBook Pros, they are definitely, definitely still worth picking up. And I know that they're still actually kind of hard to get depending how you spec them. 
they might not be in stock yet. So um, make sure you just check your closest Apple site wherever you happen to live. Hope this vid was kind of useful on what you should end up picking. And I am praying that that MacBook Air that comes out this year will have a deeper orange colorway. Apple, do not make it this dirty salmon. I think I might be uh, getting ready for the biggest letdown. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this vid and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.